Yes, please. Uh, Chair Delanue. Present. Uh, Vice Chair Hecht. Present. Uh, Commissioner Whedon. Present. Commissioner Van Rees. Here. Commissioner Texler. Here. Commissioner Liu. Here. Commissioner Vermeulen. Present. And the board. Thank you. Thank you. All right, before we take public comments, I just want to mention that the uh, item five on the on the agenda has been removed from the agenda. Um, I think today. Okay, so we won't be discussing this today. Do we have any public comments? Nothing at this time. Okay, no public comments, sir. Let's move on to the first item on the agenda, the commission minutes from the last, me last meeting. Do commissioners have any comments, changes, edits? No, they look fine. Move approval of our uh, March. The date March 13th. Uh, commission minutes. Thanks. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the uh, minutes of the March 13th regular meeting. Please say aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is probably the one we're going to spend the most time today is uh, discussing the work plan for 2023-2024. So basically from April to April. Um, do you want to share the presentation? So a few slides just to uh, remind us of uh, what's in the CAP and specifically what's in the CAP for the first part of the CAP implementation, which is up to 2025. So uh, we can go quickly through that. Um, next one. So we have 68 actions in the CAP. You remember 42 are mitigation actions. 11 adaptation actions and uh, 15 cross-cutting actions. Next. And that has to be done in like 13 years, right? So 68 actions in 13 years doesn't mean we're gonna do all the actions, but, uh, and some things can take care of several actions at the time. Is it still 13 or is it 12 and a half? 12 and a half, 12 and three quarters. <laughs> uh, so the way, so I, I've, I've separated the mitigation actions by categories like it is in the CAP, transportation, energy, resource conservation, municipal operations. What I want you to focus on specifically is the, the actions or the goals that I highlighted and, and bold. Like, for example, parking management plan was something that was priority one. So priority to be done by 2025, the bike scooter share pilot. It's a pilot that we're talking about. The transit-oriented development, which you know, in some ways it's taken care of through the housing uh, element. Uh, and the leave near work also was another action that was in the in the 2000, 2021, when we did the plan or 2022, when it was approved to 2025. Next slide. Okay, on the steel transportation, electrification, increase the number of level two chargers, increase charging through rich code. So that's ongoing right now, at least number 1.5C, one, 1. because it's already included in the rich codes. We hope the rich codes will be passed reasonably quickly uh, soon. And then the number of level two charger 1.5A is um, not just in housing, but also in the community in general, public access to level two chargers. Which in Los Altos, thanks to the schools, we already have a lot of level two charges. That I mean, we don't necessarily want to add some more. Next slide. There again, um, still in transportation, um, you see uh, some of the actions, residential and commercial energy audits. Um, you know, again, the same uh, for commercial and uh, residential efficiency. Um, so it's audits, then efficiency, uh, then expanding the rich codes to add remodels, which is included in our rich codes that are going to be reviewed tomorrow by the council. Um, residential uh, 
HVAC and water heater replacement, as well as commercial HVAC and water heater replacement as well, were goals for, um, for action that were prioritized in the, you know, before 2025. The fee on met methane use, as one we had discussed uh, in the cap, uh, the increase, uh, increased community solar capacity as well is another one that was included in the 2025 actions. That was for energy. Uh, next one. Resource conservation, single-use plastics, so a ban on single-use plastics. We've, we've been working on that for quite a while. Um, reduce the waste from demolition and construction. So the idea there, as you remember, is to uh, have deconstruction and not demolition so that we can control the waste and recycle as much as possible. Uh, and then the promoting sustainable choices, which is more of a communication aspect um, in the kind of... Um, life change in some ways for Los Altos residents that are interested. Next one. Again, a lot in there into municipal operation were highlighted to be done by 2025. Uh, again, the auditing of the city facilities and doing uh, perform energy efficiency upgrades setting a net zero standard for new buildings that will be constructed by the city after thinking about the police department and some other buildings that people have, yeah, that, that are in the in the plan uh, for the next few years um improve city staff use of commute alternative expand work from home and flexible schedule policy some of that is actually already implemented by the city for 4b for example next one Continue to allow virtual presentation in public meetings. That's also something that's done. It's really what's happening right now for commission meetings and council meetings. So I think we can check mark that one. That was the only one on that slide, next one. Uh, green community and climate risk. So with regards to green community, um, the create a water efficient buildings and landscapes. So I think um, that should be, um, at least part, if not, you know, in the new uh, water conservation guidelines that we actually are working on right now, it's, uh, especially uh, coming from M1, which is the, the regional uh, draft ordinance, and then increase the urban tree canopy, um, and that would, would be part of a urban forest master plan. Uh, in terms of climate risk, update the city uh, citywide flood risk assessment and then conduct heat, stu heat studies uh, to identify heat islands. These are not high priority items, actions, so we can always defer that to uh, you know, another time if we don't believe that we can focus on those within the next two or three years. Next one. In terms of adaptation actions, um, Developing temperature heat protocols for outside work. We've talked about that in the cap. We explained in the cap. It's really allowing people to work earlier in the morning, later in the evening, open parks later in the evening when it's during hot days. Um, adjust expand, that's the, the adjust expand park and public facilities hours during heat. Um, expand public drinking also, fountains and ref drinking fountains and refillables to uh, make sure people are hydrated uh, and have uh, ways to stay hydrated actually uh, during heat waves. Update the wildfire warning and safety protocol, develop early warning system for air quality alerts, um, ensure high air quality in those spaces and purchase and 95 masks for high risk populations. Next one. Identify and form public facilities to be used as resilience hubs. So I think there is some work ongoing right now in terms of trying to figure out which public facilities could be used as resilience hubs. Um, develop outreach and comprehensive care strategy for vulnerable population um, and update the CERT to include growing climate as a hazard. And I think that's it. Maybe there is another one. All right, so these are, um, some of the potential um, actions for the work plan for 2023-2024. Um, the way this was put together, um, 
to have that discussion here at the, at the, at the meeting is that I had discussion with staff and also at the discussion with the, the vice chair about potential actions for this year and the beginning of next year that are um, that were within the cap within the 2020, 20, 2025 uh, time frame in the cap. Um, so these are some of the actions that I'd like us to discuss uh, today and um, prioritize potentially some of these actions. Obviously, there are too many actions there. I think we can't do everything this year, but um, some of the ones that are in yellow uh, are uh, some of the ones that could be potentially prioritized. And some of them have started or are ongoing right now. The single use plastics ordinance is not necessarily ongoing now, but that's something that uh, some work has been done on that already. The energy audit of city buildings, um, that's also something that has been started. There has been discussions with um, the Bay, uh, Bay Aran technical assistance program. So that's something that um, obviously with a lot of it will be driven by staff. Complete the water efficiency ordinance. That's the work is ongoing. Obviously we're waiting for the update on, on the M window. The complete uh, the tree protection ordinance. It's something that's ongoing right now. We have an arborist. We have discussion, and I think yeah, there was some subcommittee meetings and, and things are moving in the right direction. So one action item that um, you know is up for discussion is uh, developing a plan for the city fleet, re fleet replacement. So in the cap, if you remember. The objective was to have the CD fleet being 100% electric by 2030. So if we want to stick to that goal, we're going to need to start thinking about buying electric cars, electric vehicles, when we start renewing the CD fleet, because some of these vehicles will be um, operating seven years from now, for sure, maybe even more. Some, some actually... Uh, Vehicles right now within the fleet are more than seven years old, they're eight or nine years old. So um, these, these vehicles tend to stay in the fleet pretty long. So uh, that's one thing that uh, could be in, the, in, in our work plan for this year. EV infrastructure funding, um, you know, a lot of what we, would, what we would want to do in terms of increasing the number of level two chargers, um, DC fast charging and so on, we will probably do some uh, funding for that. So there is, inf uh, there is funding that will be, uh, that is available through the Inflation Reduction Act. There, are, there is some other funding that will be available on that, that is currently available and will be available on that. So it's a matter of really identifying that funding and, and uh, trying to get some of that. Another item, which I think, um, is worth considering is trying to continue to accelerate building electrification. So going one step further after uh, the reach code, which is really address new buildings and remodels, significant remodels is trying to help people electrify their buildings, switch gas appliances, basically for electric ones. The net zero standards for new city buildings, I think, uh, we know, I think it would be nice to, as a city, to set specific standards for all new buildings that will be constructed by the city moving forward. Um, in the cap, um, we have a goal of updating the greenhouse gas emissions inventory every two years. So the one we have now and the one that was in the cap was 2018. We due for an update, we have we, we should have 2020 data. Uh, so I think that um, is something that we should probably think of doing this year. Um, but that's an unusual year because shutdown of the pandemic. Yeah. So a lot less vehicle on the road. It would be a little bit anomaly in terms of data. It might be. Yeah, it might be. And I think that's, yeah, I mean, then 2022, which would be probably the next update, maybe that we probably can do actually next year because, uh, uh, you know, my show of slight increase. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's 
these are all important markers. I think we need to have those markers to be able to monitor what we're doing and how well we're doing. And, and even if 2020 was a little bit special because of COVID, I think it's important. I mean, it's up for discussion, obviously, but I think it's going to be important to get it. Also, because the previous cap, cap 13, was actually had a 2020 uh, target date in, ter in terms of uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So I think it would be, it, it's going to be important to have that 2020 date as a market, I think. Uh, yeah, as a what I'm trying to say is that it's not attributed because people are, uh, you know, emitting less. It's, it's just that there's a, you know, it, the data is going to be not very accurate to reflect that. Could yeah. we reference 2019? Yeah. Instead, or? Oh, we do. I mean, we don't want to do 2020 for one reason or another. I think we should try to do 2021. Because I think when 2023, and we may not have all the data, I don't know exactly, but I, I, we should have all the data for 2020. I don't know for 2021. Um, Wasn't the last um, inventory provided by us recently? And are they, do we know if they're planning of doing that again for their members? Um, no, it was a combination of several things. It was because the SVC provides the, you know, the data around the building, they provide some data around uh, vehicles, miles travels, and so yeah. on, but they don't, they don't provide everything. So you still need to gather some more information from other agencies. They're done. We could um, show our table as well. Yeah, that, let's, let's do that maybe, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much the same. It's just more specific in terms of uh, the actions. Actually, there is a little bit more in your table, I believe. So I noticed that a comment box popped up that the member of the public, are you about yes. wanting to make a comment? I know we missed that, that portion already. Oh, the, 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 yeah. the general comment, yes. yes. Responding to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so. What's dark green is pretty much what's ongoing already right now. Although we, not, not exactly, actually. Yeah. No, yeah. So we took, uh, we went with Chair Delanue and city staff looked at kind of what we thought some of the cap priority items were and some of the work plan items could be um, in combined. Uh, his input as well. And so just, uh, divided this into the different items, but also kind of broken into potential specific goals within the fiscal year. Um, so some of those are carryovers from the last, the last work plan from the last fiscal year, and also adding uh, some of those additional items that we've been talking about, and we broke it into some categories here where we had a few things under green city operations. Uh, some of the emergency management resilience type type work and then ongoing efforts such as the next TV fair, any kind of outreach and education efforts, and then updates to the EC webpage, you know, as needed or as that comes up. Could you go back to the top and just explain the columns? Priority is based on. So priority is we we had you know estimated one two three four and then we hadn't prioritized anything beyond that just because those the top two are priorities from city council already so I think those will stay priorities um, and then this was staff's best guess of the next two um, and greeting city operations is already partially in progress. So is this a table from what uh, Bruno, your list was? Yeah, it's pretty much the same, but with a but, more specific in okay, terms so of the, the action the items. Overall priority item yeah. and all those things from that list, I'm just trying to- Yeah, it's the same. The priority numbers okay. are from the cap, and then she's listed the action items. So then the cap 51A is the water conservation and so on. And then the specific goals, 
the idea there is this is what could, we could potentially achieve this year or we should try to do this year. We have way too many actions there. Okay, so we need to prioritize and we need to decide whether that these actions make sense or the other one we should be doing. Uh, so that's, you know, what, what I would like the discussion to be around. So in the cap, we had listed the priority one, two, and three rather than a, a sequential priority. I'm wondering if it makes sense to add that in here so we can figure out how the cap priority lines up with the priority of what we're working on. Um, oh, I mean, it... are, are all of these items priority one or two? I think most of them, yeah, most of them, yeah. There, are, I don't think there are any priority three in there, so I don't know that it will, except the yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you look at there is a number three, which is was that single use plastic audience, was that priority number three, uh, priority three? Really? No, no, in the cap. Is is that three? Oh no, that's your priority list. It's that one, two, three. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no. So are you ready for yeah, discussion? No, yeah. All right. Just, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm speaking. I'm talking too much. Questions and comments and then allow for any public comments. Yeah. Questions and comments. Not discussion. Okay. Um I mean this is a comment from me individually. Um, so one of the things that when I look at this, um, some of these items, I question how much value, extra value EC is going to um, bring to this above staff efforts, right? I'm not sure that the EC is going to have a lot of ability to provide too much input into a electrification planning. We could perhaps do research on what kind of vehicles might fit the city's needs and what the options are. Uh, but we would have to, you would have to spend so much time educating us about what the fleet is, what's what's coming due, what's, you know, budgeted for, you know. So some of these items, I think, um, I think for me, it would be helpful to say where where does the responsibility best lie in terms of driving, no pun intended, some of these items. Um, and, but something like a more of a policy statement, like what should our uh, net zero policy be for new buildings? That I think could be something we could look at different municipalities. What have they said? What are they incorporated? That's something we could bring more value to. Um, likewise with um, resilience hubs and, and the other piece of it being the funding piece of it, um, you know, a lot of these things again are will be held up by the availability of funding. Um, I would say resilience hubs are a priority in the sense that we want to identify before anything new is built or anything is remodeled, where are we going to put those resources in the city? Um, so the longer we wait to do that, the more opportunities we lose to, you know, comprehensively build that into perhaps a new safety building or wherever. Um, but I think the things that are, you know, darker green or whatever you want to call it. Um, the, on the top for sure, I think are things that we need, we should continue to work on the, the first three. Um, and I personally would like to at least have a discussion about um, what, are, what are we doing as a city to ensure uh, resilience, but in term, also in terms of um, providing um, respite to our our community members in these increasingly increasing um, uh, weather events. Other questions, comments? Um, a couple just, I think, organizational questions. I'm curious now, is this a priority list, uh, et cetera, and list of items are things that combination the city should be working on with help from the environmental commission or is this leading to the environmental commission work plan uh, 
Um, and that's kind of where maybe some of those questions is this like something that cities in general working with and wherever it makes sense for the EC to help um, drive that or we, you know, we come and plug in uh, or is it specifically tied to the EC work plan? Um, and then I'm still confused about priorities uh, based on, because different places we have different priorities for different things, like for the single use plastics, it was on a different priority for the EC work plan. So just curious where those things are, are getting sorted out. And I guess the third question, again, along those lines is when we set out the cap, we listed things with parties one, two, and three. Does it make sense to maybe revisit some of that? Could it be that some things that were priority three or one don't make sense to be that anymore? For example, if we have you know, extreme rain events and does it make sense to look at the flooding plan, which we had as a priority three, because I think the time we wrote it, we were in deep drought. So I'm just wondering, does it make sense to look at some of those things and see, does it, or periodically just look at it and see if it makes sense or bring something up or down? You can see it back in line, because two other things that I forgot to include. There have been things that have changed from a regional standpoint since we wrote the cap the backman um, phase out or end of sale of methane appliances, I think would somewhat change um, how we approach our um, approach to methane. Just a clarification. Maybe you want to be more specific. <laughs> the Bay Area Air Quality Management District um, passed a rule that by 2027. 2027, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, methane appliances will not be available for sale in the Bay Area anymore. So you will not be able to buy a new gas water heater. So it, you know, accelerates the timeline that we need to get people to, uh, and, and change this conversation a bit. And then there was another point that gets farther down and I forgot. <laughs> AC, do you mind? Uh going down the list a little bit more. Oh, so, the parking study. Yeah. I think that that also may be something that's coming up with the housing element, that that's something that you, they may be requiring right, the housing, uh, the state agency that whoever oversees the housing element might be requiring parking study. So that may be something uh, another body that's, you know, mm -hmm. another part of the city is doing anyway. Just mention that. More questions, comments? See, a couple things. Yeah. Um, at the last council meeting, which I get to later, um, it was mentioned that uh, council is looking at, you know, what our top priorities are and staff reflects that too. So not necessarily, I think, what we would be doing is priority, but just what, what do we consider the priority for the city? I, I, I think it does weigh somewhat on that. Um, and to that effect, uh, I look at green and city operations as uh, pretty urgent, especially considering one of the things that happened in the last meeting, which was two uh, hybrids were approved for the police fleet. Uh, so instead of 100% electric. Um, so whether that we're actually influenced in the research piece of that, it does seem important that we would still think of that as a high priority and that maybe we're still asking for staff to give updates so that the public have easier ways to engage. Um, with those priorities and possibly help out in that way as well. So, the questions, comments? Oh, I see. So if there aren't any more questions and comments, maybe we can take up in comments on that particular item. Do we have any members of the public that would like to comment on the work plan? I see one hand raised. Two. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Periba, and I'm uh, requesting. I live in Los Altos for the past. Uh, I've lived here almost 25 years, um, and I see um, a lot of uh, activities about uh, turning green and making um, our environment a little bit more uh, respective to um, uh, the true uh, uh, greenness uh, throughout the city. Um, one thing I'd like to make a comment is that as a part of the work plan, I would really appreciate if you can add a section or consider adding a section to put some uh, guidelines and bylaws about how they are adding um, these uh, fake grass um, in the residential homes. Um, and the reason I'm saying is this, because I noticed there was a new construction near my home and they put this um, artificial turf and the amount of uh, plastic particles, green plastic particles that throughout the rain season that we had was going into our water system. Um, and um, I think we should have some form of uh, guidelines in the work plan that uh, provides uh, uh, what are the instructions, uh, especially with the planning commission um, and design commission that what, uh, what are the rules and how they can implement these uh, plastic turfs um, uh, throughout the city. And if they are doing it, what is the responsibility about the cleanup and making sure nothing gets into their drainage system. Um, I have pictures of the damage that this specific home uh, which was built on 18, I mean, 1586 on Holt Avenue near Grant Park. Uh, the damage that they've done to the environment is huge. And, and I don't know if the Environmental Commission is aware of it, but um, I can provide some pictures so you can see what is been going into our water uh, drainage. And also these particles are all across, even in the neighborhood, I found them in um, uh, other people's yards is going into the soil. So um, I think we need some guidelines from you guys uh, to tell people what, what can, they can do. And if they install them, uh, what should be the restrictions about um, um, you know, damaging the environment? So I really appreciate if you guys can consider something like that uh, as a part of your plan for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Frank. Thank you. Uh, next is Gary, Gary Hedda. Uh, hello, Commissioners. Uh, Gary Hedden, resident of Los Altos and a uh, member of Greentown Los Altos. I'm interested in the, the, the conversation about tree protection and, uh, and the, ultimately the urban forest master plan. The recent storms, it was heartbreaking, all the trees that we lost. And so part of tree protection could be, well, let maybe step back. Maybe what we need to do is see are there any lessons learned from that uh, awful damage. Um, so do some kind of a survey or an investigation. Would, uh, would uh, an inspection program have helped, for example? Uh, are there certain types of trees that are at greater risk than others? And maybe those need to be elevated to more frequent inspections. Are there certain trees that perhaps shouldn't even be protected? So I, I think uh, thinking along those lines might be helpful. As you know, Greentown is, is trying to plant trees, uh, 500. And today I was able to plant four trees uh, with uh, high school volunteers. It is spring break. And so I could get high school volunteers on a Monday. And so that was very satisfying. And we are also planning to replace the tree that was lost at the Smith house um, a big oak uh, that must have been at least 150 years old, but it has some structural damage, so it was removed by uh, city crew. And I want to replace it, and I'm working with Ron Reynoso, by the way, to, to do that. I'd like to replace it on Arbor Day, April 28th, and have uh, the mayor out there with a shovel. I think that'd be pretty exciting. Moving in the direction of protecting trees and planting new ones. So just a heads up on that coming, coming your way, I hope. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Gary. I don't think we have any more public comments, so we can have the, the discussion about the work plan right now. All right, so, um, so one way to look at it is to say, um, there is a first section of the work plan which has to do with things that's ongoing right now. 
So that obviously is something that's a given for 2023, like the tree protection ordinance, the water conservation ordinance, and the single-use plastics ordinance. Um, as part of the tree protection ordinance, well, after the tree protection ordinance, one question uh, for this uh, commission is, do we want to start the process of developing an urban forest ma management plan? And what I think uh, we could potentially be doing this year is set goals for that urban uh, forest master management plan or, or urban forest master plan and be ready to send RFPs. I don't think we can go beyond that because we will need a budget to be able, we probably will need consultants to work with us on this and therefore we need a budget and therefore it needs to be including in the budget at some point, not in this year's budget, but in next year's budget. So uh, that's, that's one example of something that flows with along with what we've been doing already. And that's, you know, kind of a nat natural progression in some ways to go from tree preservation guidelines to looking at, you know, the forest, the urban forest in, in Los Altos, how can we improve it? How can we increase it? How can we increase the green space in Los Altos and so on? So a more complete, holistic, if you want, type of uh, plan that can be implemented in the years to come. Uh, so there are things on there that, you know, would not be something that the, Commission would be necessarily directly involved with, for example, the GSG inventory for 2020. That obviously is something that staff would, would have to take on and they need to be able to do it. And that's not necessarily something that we can have a, a huge impact on. Uh, but I think everybody um, would appreciate that suddenly uh, since uh, it's, uh, it's due now. Now, uh, some of the other ones, you mentioned the new parking management plan, obviously it goes beyond the environmental commission. <laughs> it's something a lot more complex that will involve a lot of other commissions and obviously staff and the council. So I think it's more here as a placeholder than something that we necessarily need to put in the work plan, but it's a question mark for everybody to discuss. But you know, I, I think probably the commission needs to be involved with whatever is being done at the city level around parking management, because it has it was it has implication from an environmental standpoint. You know, we have in the cap some ideas that was put in the cap around parking management in Los Altos, dedicated parking management for electric cars with charging stations, potentially dedicated parking for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, and, and, and in general, minimizing the number of parking spaces to increase the number of people using alternative modes of transportation, whatever they are, whether it's biking, whether it's walking, whether it's using public transportation, which salary is sketchy today, but you know, again, in the plan for a later date, we had also the idea of having an EV shuttle that could go you know, uh, from south to north to downtown and so on. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's all I should say. That's all I want to say about this. I just wanted to kind of introduce the concept and have you, uh, you know, give your input, try to come up with some kind of an uh, agreement around what the guidelines should look like for the work plan. Even if we don't necessarily have a specific work plan tonight, at least have some ideas of what it's going to look like for us in 2023. So um, just to add to that, uh, sorry, to jump yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, the way it was, I mean, if we're tying the work plan to the cap, then the way, it, you know, the cap was structured was around, you know, groups of things. So the parking management goes together with the shuttles, with the whatever. So it's kind of one category of things that, you know, if you do one without the other, uh, you know, then you're stuck with, say, you, you know, reduce parking, but you don't provide shuttles and, you know, people you know, don't have places to park where they have to. So kind of, and then same thing with the urban forest master plan, it kind of, you know, protect the trees, animal green spaces, you know, all that stuff kind of goes together. So I wonder if we keep that kind of overall structure um, and then parse out what it makes sense 
of that uh, to work on it instead of picking out one thing in itself because uh, then it may you know without the support of all the other things um, or having a combined plan that uh, you know maybe this we work with the city to have that vision to kind of lay it out as to when we might work on it um, I'm wondering if you know we type that into the work plan instead of individual things. And then, yes, pick individual things as they're needed to implement a bigger plan. Sure. Yeah, and actually, I should obviously, it's obvious that everything in there is pretty much driven by the cap. Um, there's nothing really that, I mean, that I know of that we should. I mean, I don't know if Casey and Tanya have something today there to say there, but is there something that the city is working on right now that's probably come, gonna come to the environmental commission at some point this year that should be also listed in there? I think so. I think everything is in there that we would that we thought would be some kind of collaborative effort between DEC and staff. Okay. In the past, we've had things like um, the cement, um, the Lehigh, and some things that came to us for just researching that were not necessarily yeah, bad, yeah. but they were environmental. So yeah. I'm wondering if... Uh, well, I'm sure there would be stuff yeah. that will come to us during the year that we can't plan for right now, just because yeah. things evolve all the time, right? So, I mean, but we have to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is that CAP is one large area, but it's not all of what environmental could be. It's no, no, absolutely. It's yeah, pollution, yeah. Yeah. other stuff that may or may not impact. Yeah, that we are very good eventually during the year, absolutely. I think we proposed also um, revisiting it within six months. Yes. To see if within the fiscal year, if any of the priorities need to change either from our perspective or your perspective. Yeah. So that's something we haven't done in the past. And I think it would be nice to do is like six months from now. So in October, for example, we take a look at the work plan and make adjustments as needed. Whether there are priorities are gonna change, maybe they'll be shifted around some of the actions. We need to remove some stuff or add some stuff. I think it would be useful to have that as part of the process as well. So do we have a number we're aiming for uh, or well um no i don't well one way to look at it is the 68 actions in 13 years that gives you roughly six actions a, a year right so that's that that's the number we can right. we can start looking at thinking about how many actions we should put in there but it doesn't mean it can't be five one one year because some of these actions are more important than maybe another year it's six or seven just because they're small actions uh, that can be done reasonably easily without a significant budget. So, and then the, the other question is: Are we having this joint council staff uh, council commission uh, retreat? And that always that usually in the past has informed kind of what rises the priority on the work plan. So that's that's still the plan is to have that joint council meeting. I don't know exactly when it's going to be maybe May, maybe June, uh, but it's it's still part of the plan right now, as far as I understand it. So obviously, whatever we decide and whatever we prioritize with staff as a commission is going to have to go to council, and then they make they can make changes. Obviously, add some stuff, remove some stuff, depending on. Also, what can be done based on the budget that we have to work around this year? And understanding of, you know, as you know, there, are, there has been a lot of discussions around the role of the commissions and changing the process and all that stuff. I think one of the things that's being discussed right now is do we align the work plan with the budget? Because that's not the case right now, right? So, but at least for the time being, this is what we're working with, right? We 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 do like the previous years. We try to figure out what the work plan should be for the commission. We go to the council. The council basically moves the work plan or changes, make edits, whatever. 
So it looks like where you are in the step in the process is this is sort of the, the ideas of a preliminary discussion with staff on what could eventually integrate with what their priorities are. Yeah. And you bring those and then it has to be vetted further and then it brings to council and from that it may be reduced or it may be different things added to it um, to, to uh, support some of the primary items. I, I think, you know, I think that's a reasonable process. And I think I go along with uh, uh, Rashina that, that, that if in, while you're doing that, there may be other things in the plan that says, this is a logical step to include with that. And it's within, you know, the budget and staff time that we have. So we should be looking at that along with this. And, and that's really the process of organizing with staff and then getting the, the consensus with, with council that is priority. So I, I don't see anything wrong with this initial rough cut. I think all I'm saying is you keep your eyes open. Is there any other low hanging fruit that you can add to it? Yeah. And I would also say that um, I'd like to see our priority items be not so specific like that the tree protection or even though they're different parts of the cap, that the tree protection ordinance and the urban forest management plan are kind of treated separately. You know, I, I would like to see that we have whatever we call it, urban forest as a general item. And, you know, first finishing the tree protection ordinance, then working on an urban forest management plan fall under that. Um, I like, you know, having, having the different, some of the different areas represented you know, um, having water, uh, waste, and then I'd like to, you know, obviously have energy <laughs> as one of the priority areas, and then natural or natural habitat. So, you know, having elements from each of those areas um, in our priority list. I, I I think you're absolutely spot on because we can we can. We can do update, you know, the, the tree protection ordinance, but in order to do anything, you know, we have to be able to measure what is our urban forest. How is it changed by the recent storm? You know, and, and how is it how's it change over time? Are we making progress or not making progress to getting more more uh, uh, green in the in the community? You know, so you know, it's it's an important factor that that maybe we don't have the time and budget this year, but to me, if we don't start measuring it, we're never gonna know where we are and if we're gaining or losing ground. Uh, Casey, can you go down a little bit on the, on the list there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, um, Correct right, me if I'm wrong, but I, 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 it seems like there is a general consensus around what's in, what's in there. There is nothing obvious that jumps to, to you and that says we shouldn't do it. Or we should take it off the list. I think the only one which I think is a question mark in terms of whether it belongs in, in our work plan is the new parking management plan. Because yes, it's in the cap, but I think it's, be, it's it goes beyond the, the uh, environmental commission. And I think that's something that the city council probably has to decide whether that's something they want to take on. And if that's something they want to take on, I think we should probably should be involved in the process, but I don't think we should be the ones driving it necessarily. the process so if something if there is a new parking management plan that's being worked on what is the process for oversight say from either either the city or a different commission to see make sure that it takes into account recommendations from the cap or whatever you know how, how do you kind of make sure that these are not just things that are approved and sitting somewhere and not implemented as we go along it's done so you know we don't want to lose the opportunity to um, to plug in things as uh, 
as the city is working on them and make sure they align. So how how does does the city automatically do that? Do, who checks? So I'm just. I think it's you know I think that the. I I I don't I don't answer that question. <laughs> I don't. It was it was just a. Yeah. Um, but you know if the city council, uh, it's hypothetical right now. Okay, so but if the city council says we need to put together parking management plan, and they're probably going to ask staff to do that. So then it becomes a question of who gets involved in that. Who are the departments within the within staff that's going to be involved with that, and does staff want to involve commissions and which commissions? I'm guessing that's the way the process might be, or maybe the council can say you work with those commissions, you staff work with those commissions to put it together. You put together a task force with people from those commissions. I don't know. Just it's, historically, the answer has been very happy. For example, when the community center was being built um, and there was a task force around that, it wasn't necessarily that they came to us and said, Environmental Commission, what do you think our uh, goal should be? We said, they're building a new community center. We as a commission should put together what, what we think top priorities are. It should be 100%, you know, it should be carbon neutral. It should be sustainable. Like we came, we recognized what was happening and we kind of pushed it. But there are, of course, many things going on in the city that we don't know about. Um, so in the past, I'm just saying, historically, it hasn't been super coordinated in terms of, oh, Complete Streets is working on this. We should get Environmental Commission to, to weigh yeah, in because yeah. this also has an input on transportation in terms of sustainability. So, yeah. If my question was leading to, is there a way to make it more intentional uh, and deliberate? I think we need to be uh, as proactive as we can be, I would say, in general. And I think when we see something that's being discussed at the city level, whether it's a city council discussion or whatever I think we should know about it you know if we if we believe we can have some input useful input positive input I think we probably should have that positive input like really Santa um like for example like 10 five which we won't be able to discuss today for different reasons but you know knowing what's going on and you know having a chance as a commission to say something and to say I think we would like to recommend that you do that instead of doing that for us. Uh, all right, so um, can I take that one step further um, since we are kind of in general agreement around what could be in the work plan this year? Can I ask uh, the commission to go through the exercise of trying to prioritize some of these actions that are not prioritized right now? So right now we have the tree protection ordinance. We can combine that with the urban forest management plan as one, one task or one action, understanding that in the goals, it would be to have the tree protection ordinance first and then potentially have defined goals and objective for the urban forest master plan so that we can we are ready to do an RFPs once we have the green light and the budget, right? So that's so that could be kind of like. Priority number one. Um, then we have the M1 though, which is number two, and then we have the single use plastic ordinance, which is number three right now. Now, grading city operations as a whole could be number four. Um, how would you rank the other ones? Or would you move, we would chat, we, would you want to change priorities, suggest changing priorities? I would suggest changing the priority for. Um having a uh, pilot project with um, block power to up to like number four, because I think it's, again, an area where commission input is, is more valuable. Okay, so if you go down the list, Casey. Oh, that's the- Building right electrification. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, that's, it could that's... be all inclusive of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should be number four even. Higher up, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, continue on the uh, on the energy. Uh, so, one thing that got done, check marked, I guess, is updating reach or 
But it's not done yet. Don't cut your chicken. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but, I mean, but yeah, it's from moving our, forward. From, yeah. from our perspective, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, from our so, yeah, I would put that. I would, I would see, I would even look at it a little bit broader. What you want to do is, is start looking forward to building electrification that you may want to include in the next uh, cycle of the building codes, because that's two and a half years away. And so you really sort of have to know is existing building electrifications, which block power could be an objective of, or one element of, you take a broader look at it and say, what do we want to be planning for with the next cycle of, of, of the building code update? So it would be kind of a building electrification project, kind of, and then within that project, we have several potential yeah, actions. It's, it's really this time, it's just start thinking about it. It's, it's not this year, but it, you know, maybe next year you you have to start work on, you know, does it really make sense to to reach further down into uh, burnout type things or 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 existing building electrification? Yeah. So I think the only the only question mark around that, um, if it's something that's going to last more than a year, is you know you need to make sure that we within the the purview of the of the Brown Act within the we consistent with the Brown Act, right? In other words, subcommittees in theory have to be short-lived and we may need to make sure there is no, not too many crossover between the various subcommittees of members being on different subcommittees, which are kind of linked in some ways or can be considered as being kind of like subcommittees working on different things, but that could be one thing. You see, if you see what I mean? So that's the only, that's the only one that I would say we need to be careful about. And I think that, I'm perfectly happy with with you know the, our chair working with staff to sort of nuance out those things and how best to, you know how best we can proceed, uh, you know and. and uh, well, I think yeah, and we we are updating our work plan every year. So even though last year we had reached goes on our work plan, which is part of electrification, this coming year we still have electrification. We're going to reform, potentially or ideally reform. A subcommittee around electrification for this current year work plan that right. would hopefully ameliorate the issue of longstanding um, subcommittees. So, just to mention the electrification, because obviously, uh, block power is one potential option for us to accelerate electrification and we've had discussion with them for a year now uh, and it's a question of making sure that we we align with or we we in agreement the city council is in agreement with us on that uh, and having a little bit of a budget also to be able to engage block power as well it's not going to be free right so it's going to cost a few thousand dollars a few tens of thousands let's say but anyway so um which is the argument for why it's a broader, a little bit of a broader priority as it's not just contract with block power, it's accelerate yeah. electrification exactly. and then we figure out. And I think we should, my proposal would be to also include community outreach in there, which can be done by a third party like CCS, uh, which we had discussions with uh, in previous meetings. Uh, <laughs> Or someone else, but I haven't really been, I haven't really found anyone else that could potentially do what they're doing. Uh, cool City is one option that I've looked at, and I think I mentioned that at the previous meeting, uh, but I'm not sure it's the, it's the right fit for Los Altos. Good questions. Are we set with Black Power? No, we're not set. Okay. We've had discussions. And we've had discussion also, um, Casey and Tanya and I had discussion with Mountain View city staff because they were also considering block power so we were looking into ways we could potentially work together uh, but i'm not sure that's a viable alternative right now from what i've heard recently so we may be on our own no matter what do we have another to consider that can help that, 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 that i know of and um i mean i think um that's the big question. I don't think there is any alternative to block power right now. There is not provided that that's what block power does. They're kind of the only ones right now in the 
That's a great question for an electrification subcommittee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Definitely. I think I think if that's something the the subcommittee would would research, make sure there is no alternative to plug power. If that's the case, then you know, we have ways of work, you know, doing something with them. I mean, they're working with San Jose. San Jose found ways of doing it. So uh, they're working with other cities uh, around the state of California and outside the state of California, right? So, uh, and, and and other cities in the Bay Area are considering Blood Bank Mountain View was one. There's other ones also potentially that they've been talking to. I just want to make a comment as we're, yeah. we're discussing the work plan. So, this work plan that we put together is kind of all the potential items yeah. that we think could be in the future work plan. It's we do need to narrow it down to be able to actually execute some of these items, um, be successful, and especially on the staff side, there's just not the capacity to to get through all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and some of this, again, just remember, some of this is really 100% staff. So it's not necessarily a DC commission work plan. It's more recommendation by DC that to the city council that's something that they should consider staff doing. Like, for example, the GHG inventory is one. It's not necessarily something that will be in the work plan. But it was listed there because I think that's something we really need to consider as a commission. Is that something that we want to push? And, and, and it's in line with what's in the caps. There are some things in transportation. If you go down slightly, Casey, that you know, I think I question marks. Uh, I think the TCFC plan. Um, that's always something that we can get started. We can start contacting companies that provide. Uh, DCFC infrastructure and see what it would take, get some ideas from them. It's more like a, us as a subcommittee potentially doing some research around that, not necessarily having staff do too much of that work and then just get do some preliminary work to help staff and that help us refine what we could do and when we can do it and whether, uh, whether it's going to cost money or how much money it's going to cost and so on. Yeah, I like the idea of prioritizing a lot of the work that it's just in the very starting point because that, yeah, maybe it'll help accelerate eventually. And uh, one of the reasons cited for the hybrid purchase was the lack of EP infrastructure at the police station. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having separating those out is difficult because it seems like that infrastructure is going to be a key component to uh, make that. Well, I mean, you know, like going back to municipal operations, creating city operations, it's like if you do a uh, a switch. If, if you develop a switch out plan for the city fleet, you have to include infrastructure in that plan. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So it's, yeah. All right. So um, uh, so can you? So can we? Um, the urban forest master plan, can we make sure that it's one within with the tree protection ordinance, understanding understanding it's a sequential type of work. So it's tree protection ordinance first, and then urban forest master plan. That's one thing that I would, I would suggest we do. Um, the greening CD operations, um, the real question around there is the fleet electrification planning. Because I think the other two, um, can be done at no cost, right? At least for the audit part of the municipal building, the municipal buildings. Um, and then the net zero standards is just something that we need to figure out that not necessarily going to cost us or cost the city any money. Um, uh, the resilience aspect is, so let's, let's talk about adaptation. Uh, Adaptation, because adaptation, you know, based on what we've experienced in the Bay Area for the past six months, is really something that we should be focusing on. The question is, how do we do that? Is that something we want to include this year? Is that something we want to look into this year? How, you know, how do we include that in the work plan? Because that requires staff time.
So let me ask you, Casey and Tahir, from your perspective, based on what you know, what you have, what your workload looks like, what do you think is manageable for you between now and April 2024 in terms of plans, actions, projects? And then again, keep in mind that we would be helping you we are resource, we would do stuff for you to help you get to the point where we all, you know, happy to have something good to the council. Because the tree protection ordinance is kind of, we can say it's hard, we had for there, right? Pretty much. Yes, so we expect that these two go to council before the end of this calendar year. Before that, but yeah. at least I would hope that the tree protection ordinance is going to go to council before summer, right? Probably by summer. Yeah. Um, and we're aiming for, I think, M window during the first quarter of the fiscal year. So by September ish. Well, um, okay, the single use plastic ordinance, that's, that's more work because we have to do outreach for that. So again, that's we need to decide how we want to do it. But um, you know, I think it should be a priority of the commission to try to move that forward. Uh, grading city operations. I think it's an important one to do. The real question in there is fleet electrification, because that by itself is, a, is, is its own project in some ways. And I think maybe. I, I, I even think that should be taken out of, it should be as a separate action in some ways, potentially, because it's 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 really a project by itself. So is that an environmental commission project or is that a staff project? I think it should be a combination of both. I think, you know, if you plan to electrify the fleet, obviously a lot of the work, you know, staff will do a lot of the background work because they have the information in terms of the cars. I mean, I know Carl has done some work on that. Yeah, but yeah. the info I was able to get was outdated. So. Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, we, you know, there's a lot of research to be done about potential cars, about the infrastructure we need to. So it's a big project, I think. And I, I don't even know if we can do it on our own without someone helping us. So it's a big question mark there. I think we should do it soon. <laughs> I just don't know, you know. Um, we have we have started working with SCC because they have a technical assistance program. Okay. Um, yeah, we just started on the initial stages um, for them to provide an analysis, and then uh, after that, we would have to work with other departments to get everyone on the same page based on that analysis. So, what is the the analysis going to give you? Just just to understand what you're getting from SDC. It's going to give us an analysis of our current fleet and uh, when we would need to replace and what infrastructure we would need to build. Okay. But I guess one other comment to make is each of these APC under Green City Operations are their own project. We've just Grouped them together so that we can view that as one category. Um, but looking at the work plan, we could take one of them, two of them, three of them. You know, it doesn't have to be taking all three. Yeah, we could almost prioritize within those, is what you say, right? Yeah. And some of these two, I think. I think some of the specific goals that we've been looking at, especially for urban urban forest management plan and for fleet electrification and it's kind of it's getting that element started um doing like a planning phase or figuring out the rfp figuring out funding uh, just i think that those kinds of like tangible tasks makes it a little bit more reasonable for staff that we're not we're not just saying urban forest management plan mm -hmm. as yeah. an item yeah kind of identifying some tangible goals within that. So um, 
Okay, good. So let, let's say we have one, two, three, four, and then the urban forest management plan goes into one, understanding that it's number one tree protection ordinance. Once we're done with that, then we can start working on, you know, putting together some ideas around what we want out of that urban forest master plan, and then therefore be ready to send RFPs maybe at the beginning of next, next year, right? So that's, let, let, let's do it this way. I think I suggest we do that. Uh, grading city operations, we can we can prioritize within that, that. I think the municipal building energy audits, I think it's ongoing right now already, that started. We have Baron already that can help us with that. So that should be pretty straightforward. And then out of that, we've come out, we will get a budget to upgrade these buildings that have been uh, uh, marked as uh, as building that would benefit from energy audit and upgrades. Uh, the net zero standards for new city buildings, um, that's kind of an internal type of project. I mean, we definitely, as a commission, like uh, Laura was mentioning, we can help putting together some guidelines on what, or what, around what the net zero standard should look like and what we should use uh, as a reference for net zero buildings. But something like that, and this is where I don't know that we have enough information. If there's no, you know, city owned building that's going to be built in the next year, then that's not necessarily a priority for us. Like if it's going to be 10 years, <laughs> no, not 10 years, five years before anything major is being built, you know, maybe that's not a priority. I don't have enough information to say. Well, I mean, the, the one that I know that's on the horizon is really the city, the police yeah, building, police, right? yeah. police and emergency. Wait, is that horizon two, one year, two years, three years, four well, years? I, I don't the, know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so, I, I don't know what the, you know, uh, there's been discussion about bonds and so on. So, uh, so I just from limited information, I would say that that's probably not a huge priority. Anything that requires, that's only going to impact a um, substantial new building i would likely say maybe that's not a priority for next year because if, if it's not already going to be in the budget for next year it's not going to happen next year so yeah it's probably something we don't need to to focus on yet okay fair enough let's go down the list the resilience emergency management and resilience is that something we would like to take on this year? Or one of the two or the two? And somewhat similar comment there is that if there's not a substantial budget already in the works for, yes, you need to first know what you want to do, right? I, I get that. But um, if we can at least get enough runway to know when new things are coming along with capital uh, investments being done, then we can focus on that when it's time appropriate. But it's also possible using some existing places. Many cities are doing that, like using their community center or library, I mean, especially like- Sure, with areas. investments, right? If yeah. we wanted to upgrade yeah. the community center to be a um, the resilience you have, right? Then we need to have existing resource, you know, more resources there to do that better backup power and all that kind of stuff. Right. That requires substantial, substantial amount of capital. So, but I think what the 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 idea there is, you know, like the goal is actually identifying those potential buildings and how much is gonna how much money is going to be required to upgrade this building so that they can become a resilience hub so that I, you yes. would put that in next year's budget. I, 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 I agree it's a little bit of a chicken and egg, but if if the city knows they're, that they're going to go out for a bond in two years, then maybe these things are... Yeah, that would be for the net zero standards, potentially, right? Net zero, but also, you know, for in you know other infrastructure needs. Well, maybe we prioritize it, and if we feel like there is already, say, three things that we're gonna need to put in next year's budget, then the last whatever things I, I get pushed down to the year after. 
And, and keep in mind that we're putting together a draft work plan, okay? So that still has to be reviewed by definitely worked with staff and then reviewed by the council. And that, that, that can change. So I think, you know, in terms of us, EC Commission, uh, what, you know, again, it's what do we think is important to focus on understanding that things get, some things can only be achieved within the goals that are specified here. Yeah, so there was discussion, uh, Casey and Tanya, there were discussions about uh, blood power and CCS in terms of accelerating uh, existing building electrification uh, as a high priority for us. So I think we need, we're gonna need to move that up. The question is it the number three or number five, for example? Uh, but is, is everybody in agreement that's something we should take on this year? So that category should definitely, um, I feel, should be on towards the top of the list of priorities. Um, if I were to rank it, I would put it at number two. I um, folks agree, disagree. Uh, and then within that, what we decide to do uh, could be, yes, figure out what to do with block power, could be something else. Let's take a look at transport. Yeah, go ahead. So, so far, we have number one as urban forest management plan, the tree protection and the RFP, and potentially some other items um, within the RFP, and then M window. Mm -hmm. um, so M window would have to stay at the top. So, right. that's, so uh, I'll have to work that in, and then. We're debate sounds like we're debating about number three being single use plastics or oh, the energy building electrification. So, how would you prioritize that? Well, this is still very um, artificial process for me, and we the way we work at our subcommittee. So, you know, you could have concurrent things happening that didn't need to be stacked in priority. Um, I understand things potentially are changing. I just from a personal perspective would put electrification. Um, if one and two are, are set, then I would put electrification as three and then single use plastics as four. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fine right. to me. All right, and then um, how do you feel about the, the items around transportation? So the grants in itself is kind of like, that's an, that's something that we should always do. So if you are, we should apply to some grants that have grants available for things that, we, that we've been considering, I guess, right? Is that something we're going to be actively involved in researching? Uh, that's a question, Mark. We're not set up right now, I think, as a city to have someone dedicated to doing grant management, researching, applying, and so on. So, you know, right now would be uh, Casey and Tanya or us or someone else in the city. I don't know who that person would be. I don't think we have necessarily something proactively looking into these things. Um, I would say that's a potential area for where the EC can help. Yes. Identify funding for some of the. Is that something as an EC we would like to take on? I think we'd have to check on that too. But yeah. <laughs> that does it become its own item or does it become as part of? some of the different subcommittees. I think the, yeah, I mean, right now it's the EV infrastructure grants that's highlighted in there, but I think uh, you could, you could, you could argue that we should be looking for grants for any, any, anything we're doing in some ways. So each subcommittee should be looking at, see, uh, see if there are grants out there. That specific area. Yeah. Focus. Since there is nobody else doing it anyway. 
only if there's the uh, opportunity to apply, you know, write grants to yeah, apply yeah. for the money. I mean, yeah, I don't know if there's the staff the resource to do that. So identifying it and applying for it are <laughs> two different things. Can I make some suggestions since it's already almost 8 30? I just want, don't want to spend <laughs> several hours on this. Yeah. Myself and yeah. at 8 25. Okay. So, um, single parent urban forest master plan as one priority number one. Understanding it's going to be sequential work with the tree protection ordinance first. And then after that, looking into setting specific goals and objectives for developing an urban forest master plan and be ready for potential RRTPs. Number two, the M1 and the water conservation ordinance would be uh, another one that we would have in the work plan. Number three, we would have the accelerating uh, existing building electrification would be number three, and that includes block power and CCS. Number four would become single-use plastics, Potentially. Number five, creating city operations. Um, um, although, uh, so, um, but let me get back to that afterwards. Um, so then that, that would be number five. And then um, do we want to have transportation as number six? You just so, didn't focus, but I, it's it's hard with those three items for me to, to say that it covers it. Also, the question is complete, how much of this does complete streets touch? And are yeah, on top of it. Yeah. Well, I don't think complete streets touches, well, A or B, really. I mean, they're not looking at the okay. infrastructure. And they're not looking at the CFC plans and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the new parking management plan, yeah, I think. We probably should set that aside for the time being, I would guess, until there is further guidance from the city in general. Um, the resilience is the other one. Um, and it's it's all about evaluation, not necessarily taking action, but understanding what the situation is with regards to potential buildings. Um, what's, what are the heat and safety air quality protocols that we have? And that we can work with uh, that we potentially need updating and so on. Is that something we want to keep? I think it's kind of important for a community, especially, you know, for uh, senior folks. I uh, I don't know what we did back in 2020. I was in here. Uh, record high temperatures and air quality was really bad. I, I, maybe there's something we can work on. I don't know. Well, that's, uh, actually, that's a good point. It's like, you know, yeah. figuring out exactly what we had in place at the time that we yeah. did or did not, did not do and then work go from there. Yeah. yeah. Sure. At this point, I would vote for the resilience and emergency management. We have cloud transportation. Even though transportation okay. is the biggest challenge. It's just like. Oh, yeah, and it's, it, we don't this, uh, again, we don't yeah, necessarily have to year. do it this year, right? Yeah. Right. So it's yeah, not necessarily something. Yeah, it's a matter of maybe where we could impact and what's needed more right. urgently. All right, so. I think we should just keep those two in, but uh, uh, not, not numerically prioritized and, and, you know, as we go along, figure out where, which, which one we can, um, which one's priority as we loop, as we go and where we can have impact. I mean, that's the thing. Okay. Me too. Where are we going to provide value? And then the greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, I'm not, I don't necessarily think it should be in the work plan, but I think it should be a recommendation that the EC makes to council that we should have one done for 2020 this year. Right. That's not something of, we're not going to create a subcommittee around yeah. that. That's what I'm saying. It's just like that's kind of a to support yeah. the outcome of 
Thank you, Rashida. Outcome of um, conversion to electric vehicle and, and also building electrification, right? But it's also it's going to be a continuing. Yeah. But is that as we take actions over the years, we need to be able to track how those actions impact right. our emissions. So make that as a, yeah. you know, like a, every two years, just like you said, because you're going to assess the impact, you know, yeah. you know, the equipment that reach coal and, and also the, uh, the EV. Right. Infrastructures. And, uh, We're never going to have one single head item like going to clean energy. <laughs> We're never going to get that. Yeah, it's not that simple. Big change. In. All right. Okay. Good. I think I think we have what uh, I think I think everybody's comfortable around uh, the prioritization and the goals. And Casey and Tanya, did you did you get? Do you want me to uh, summarize where we are with this? Or are you good? Let's repeat it just to yeah, it sounds good. So the urban forest management plan tree protection setting goals for the plan create RFP M window um, accelerating existing electrification so contract with block power um, community um, outreach single use plastics cleaning city operations um, which includes A and B right and then we have the resilience to, after that. Resilience and transportation. Uh, but they're not necessarily prioritized, right? That's what we were saying. We don't necessarily, we just put them as placeholders. But do we want to? Yeah, But again, it's you know it's it's a proposal, right? So, do we feel strongly as a commission that we should look into it? I think we'll put, yeah, we'll put the uh, emergency plan as a placeholder. I mean, we could we could take a look at what we have uh, already have and then see what area that we need to. You know. So, for example, like. Casey and Tanya, do, would you feel comfortable doing that this evaluation and coming back to the commission with an evaluation of where we stand with regards to heat safety and air quality protocols, for example, for the city of Los Altos? Whether we're using our own protocols or whether we're using Santa Clara County protocols, what protocols are we using? What are those protocols? And then we can make a decision or we can make an assessment at the commission of what can be changed. Could be a subcommittee level type of discussion. Um, I think that's how I would imagine that process going. Um, yeah, I think we we would coordinate with other departments and figure out what's what's already going on and what's what the current protocols are. I will say in this one idea moving forward with this all these items is to have. Kind of a top four or five that we are fairly confident that we can accomplish within the next fiscal year and then having kind of i don't say bonus ones but like extras that we would move to if we're able to yeah it's placeholders in some ways and then when when we have time or you have time we move them up the chain right so it's like and again it goes in the process of looking at it six months from now Six months from now, the production ordinance is done. Maybe the M1 window is done. So that's off the list and we move things up and so on. Right? Makes sense. I think we should identify those like today. Okay, so resilience, emergency management and resilience, the resilient the, the assessment of the standards we're using right now for heat safety and air quality protocols. And in that section or in that action i think there is also so how do we are they adequate right now do we need to improve on them is anybody working on something general for the bay area or for santa clara county it would be another question and then the next one is if we upgrade those for the city of los altos there is the outreach piece right so we need to make sure that whatever we have in place we need to have a system in place to alert 
vulnerable, vulnerable populations when we have air quality issues, which also is linked to the resilience. <laughs> we need to have a place for them to go if they can't stay at home. Okay, so let, 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 let's let, let's um, let's put that emergency management is re resilience as number would potentially be number six, or as a placeholder if you want to have it as a placeholder right now, and then transportation would be another placeholder or as priority seven. I would take out new parking management plan. Um, and then I think the, the question about EV infrastructure grants, for example, I think I would again I would question that because I'm not sure that's necessary. I mean that that's something that has to be done at the subcommittee level or has to be done. I think in the within the transportation, I think um, the thing I, I I think we could start thinking about and working on is the TFC DCFC plan, and that can be done by talking to potential suppliers. But I don't see us doing much more than that. And then the GHG inventory, you can put it as a placeholder also, because it's not necessarily uh, something that would be, uh, it can be EC driven, but it's not something that would be, the commission is necessarily going to have a lot to say about it, except who should do it. <laughs> Right. Okay, so are we comfortable with that? I did know on that one there in the cap it does mention a progress report as yeah. well. I don't know if the commission has talked about that at all. So. You mean to update the cap? Or to uh to report on the progress. Yeah, it's to, it's driven by the greenhouse gas emission inventory, right? It's a combination of which action are, which actions have we been implemented have we implemented and how does it impact our GSG emissions? That's really what it is. But that's why we need, you know, UAPC need them on a regular basis to be able to assess the, the impact of the actions we, we take. So for example, if we pass the reach codes and they implemented like in September, for example, for the next two and a half years. In two and a half years from now, we should be able to see whether it had an impact on our greenhouse gas emissions for the energy sector, for example, and how much of an impact it had. This is another area where I'm now confused about which way the force infection is, but for an inventory, we're going to need a budget to hire a consultant. I still, so now I'm unclear. Do we say we think? There should be an well, inventory a question, yeah. done next, you know, not this coming year, but if we want to tee it up, we think it should be next done next year, whenever that is 2024 sometime. Do we say that's something we put on our work plan to make some, you know, prioritize for the budget for that year? Or do we wait until we're told that there's money for the budget in the budget for a greenhouse gas inventory? So the I think the, the cap has that as, you know, you do it routinely again so you can measure. And I think the cap was structured so that it can be done internally. We don't need a consultant, but obviously it takes staff time to understand the models and to be able to do the data and and come out with the result. Or it, or it takes somebody to get their head under that hood and say, no, I really can't do this. I need some additional help. And so it becomes uh, how important is it is it to get that to get that update every two years? I, I forget if it's every, every two years right every two years it's uh, presented the plan. and so it's it's basically, you know is is that something that's a priority for for staff to do or to delegate it? Do. Yeah, it's a question of staff time. It, it's set up right now because you know of the way we, we we set it up with the cap, so that staff can do it without help from any consultant. But it's staff time, right? So it, then it becomes a priority for staff. Is that something that they can do? 
I personally feel like it's too early to prioritize that. Okay. And then maybe it could be a recommendation that, okay, maybe we could stretch it one more year. I'd rather spend more time doing things that will produce the greenhouse okay. gas. Then. So let's put that as a placeholder down the list and let's not necessarily prioritize anything about that. That's something we can have a discussion. We should have a discussion about that. Whether well, it's something that can be done. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, we have a cross plan. Everybody's comfortable with that? Okay, good. Casey, Tanya, any, uh, any comments? Comfortable with that too? As it stands? Yes. What, um, what would be the next steps for this plan? Do we need to do? I think the next step. Do we need to? Yeah, what I, what I was thinking about doing is that maybe we can rework based on the discussions we've had today, put something clean together, and then maybe at the May meeting, we can have a formal vote on that. Understanding it remains a draft, no matter what, we can vote as a commission, this is our work plan that can change. Or do you, do, do we want to take a vote now? Mm -hmm. You want to see an, uh, a clean version? Yeah, I think we already discussed that today. It would be good to have a chance to, uh, you know. Let it sink in and then, okay. See if we can find the council schedule too to see if it's all. Yeah, that would be useful. If we, because if we have time to do that in May, we should just vote on it in May with a, something that's finalized based on the discussions we've had today. I think the intent was for this to be finalized today. Yeah. Or should we take something in May? But I don't know that it's on the council calendar, I guess. It needs to be formally adopted. What's that? It needs to be formally adopted. Hmm. At some point, yes, whether it's uh, today or in a month from now. Okay, can we um, let, let's let's plan to formally adopt it in May, right? It should be short. Based on the discussion we've had today, we can update the work plan formally adopted in May. You mean later you can... tonight? Think we can come back if they figure out that it's going to be. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Moving on to the informational items. Um, first, the rich codes. So, so the rich codes are going to council tomorrow at the council. Who's, uh, who's attending? You, you guys are going to be attending the council meeting, right, from the subcommittee? On one of you? Uh, one of us, yes, okay. will be there. Virtual meeting. <laughs> yeah, we don't. That's the main update from staff is their uh, final recommendations are going to city council for a first reading on April 11th, tomorrow. Um, and they'll have their second reading uh, later in April. And if they're City Council approves the reach codes uh, submitted. We will submit the application to the CEC. They have a review period and then they will be filed with the Building Standards Commission. So, when it's approved by the CEC, it's effective. Does it need to go through another process? 
We just have to file them with building standards. That's it. That's what you have to do. It's not a review. It's just filing. So it can be effective as soon as council approves the ordinance. No, the the CEC is a review, but the building commission is just a file. Okay, so we have to wait for the CEC yeah. review. Okay, Which and one, be... but once the CEC review is complete and they're okay with it, then it can be. It becomes the law of the land. Right. 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 Because the council's already right. accepted or adopted the ordinance. All right. So um, I looked at the packet. <laughs> it was the city council packet. <laughs> so I, I went through it in details as much as I could. Um, I was not involved with the process as closely as you guys on the subcommittee were, but. Uh, everything in there seemed to be in line with the recommendations we made at the March meeting. Was that March or February? Anyway, yeah, I think it was February, right? Um, so it's it's very much in line with the EC recommendation, but um, that's based on my uh, quick review of the packet. Um, yeah, and the subcommittee is is looking. Reviewing it and we'll probably make a comment as the subcommittee, obviously, well, the commission reviewed comment, yeah. but um, there's a fair amount of information to go through, so short amount of time. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments about that? Let's cross our fingers. All the best. Tree protection ordinance. Public Oh, sorry. Yes, should ask for public. Do we have any public comments on this particular subject? Apparently not. Not this time. <laughs> I hope you're going to be at the meeting, Gary. Tomorrow. That's that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, tree protection ordinance. So can we? Yes. I know that things are moving. Yes, things are moving. The consultant provided a draft preliminary tree list, which in includes recommendations for street trees and private replacement trees, um, as well as a lot of different qualities of these different types of trees. So staff distributed that list to other city departments and the Environmental Commission subcommittee for review. Um, and we received comments from the subcommittee and we're still um, waiting for a couple comments from city staff but we will compile, compile all of that feedback and provide those comments to the consultant. And from there, the consultant is continuing to work on some of the, the policy type recommendations um, and should complete their work in the coming months. And then we will also bring those to the subcommittee uh, before we bring it to the environmental commission. Questions, comments? I think we were just asking um, when we were providing feedback uh, to see if it's a possible we can also meet with you and uh, our members together to go over some uh, questions. Uh, I don't know if that can be. Yeah, that's something we still need to check on. Um, okay. We didn't scope a lot of meeting time with them. Mm -hmm. So we need to be cognizant of, of how we're spending that. Uh, we need to check with the director. Of services, but yeah, we'll follow up. I think if you have a, I mean, I don't know if you've had your meeting already with the outboys, you're waiting, you're still waiting for feedback from some departments before you meet with them, right? With the outboys to give your recommendation or guidelines or whatever. Yeah, I think it's a question of whether we're going to meet to discuss those or just. Or just send them both the documents. Yes. Because if you meet with, with them or with them, then you can include the subcommittee in that meeting. So there is no additional time spent okay. with the consultant. Okay. Now, if you're sending something, I don't know what you guys, how you want to work, but you know, maybe you take a look at what's being sent before it's sent. Is that reasonable? I think many provided a, yeah. a pretty comprehensive okay. list of, of comments, so. Yeah. All right. So. You know, if 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 your plan is to meet with the outboys to basically give them the feedback received from various departments and the subcommittee 
within the city, then if you meet with them, maybe you can include the subcommittee members that are available at that time. If you're not, you know. Yeah, we just feel that I think some of the questions we could, you know, if we have this kind of face-to-face -face time, yeah, it will go better, probably more, you know, efficiently as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's an action item for Casey and Tanya to check on, right? Any public comments on the tree protection ordinance? Thank you for doing it. <laughs> yeah. All right, next agenda item is the model water efficiency uh, ordinance. We have not yet received the updated model ordinance from Green Evolution Valley Water. Um, so we are following up with them on that. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to work on peer jurisdiction research to understand what other cities have adopted in regards to M1 um, reviewing the 2022 California Green Building Standards Code, and then verifying any MWE low overlap. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at on that item. So we don't have any. Uh specific timeline for getting uh, the updated M1 though. I think we had a timeline that's that's it. Yeah. 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 So okay so there is an issue there. Yeah I think I think staff is going to just address what we can in the meantime and then um, check that with the updated ordinance when we receive it. Public comments on the, the M1 though. Any other questions, comments from the commissioners? About the process. You, you're on the subcommittee for everyone, right? Yeah. Floor, um, oh, you, you are too, right? Yeah, three of yeah, us. Rashida, right? Mm -hmm. So you're pretty much in stand standby mode right now. Yeah, I think for the last months we have a name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're just waiting. Though. Everybody's waiting. Yeah. Right? Okay. On the work plan items. Okay. Anything else? You know, if there is something separate, right. so we'll yeah. talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have anything to report either. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the only discussion item that's left now on the agenda, which is the EV fair. And uh, I guess, I don't know. Yes, if we have know. slides to present. Okay. All right, so yeah, this is the latest info that we have about this event that I can uh, share with you. And uh, important first update is we have landed on an event name, Destination Electric. Uh, sub name could be altered a little bit, but for now we're saying City of Los Alpes EV Showcase to highlight the, uh, the aspect that, you know, that there will be a bunch of cars on display and the owners will be there as well. And that'll, well yeah, that'll be a helpful point of any promotion, of course. Um, you can go to the next slide, just to get a layout idea of this event. Uh, we'll get to the, you can see what location it is, but we'll say that on the next slide. We can see the EV display area, area where boots will be. Uh, you can see this with city EV charges, something special going on there, but that's just there to point out that this is something that you know, could be talked about there. And then bathroom on the left there, we also talked about a water station um, towards the community center uh, so that people can get water during the event. Um, Next slide. 
as you could see that that was at the community center parking lot. Uh, and then just a rough idea of schedule. The event is 10 to 2, but you can see volunteer check-in will be quite a bit earlier and then vehicles we're having hoping to have there uh, well before 10, just so that everything is ready to go at that time and then check out later at 2.30. Next slide, Let's see, breakdown of vehicles we have confirmed so far. We, there are still a few more that we're uh, looking at, possibly gonna be able to get. Discussion recently about a, a Nissan that might be added as well. And then you go to the next slide. So we have a pretty good list there when I'm looking at the list. I mean, we're not missing that many, uh, oh, I think. But then we don't have any Mercedes, right? I think we did look into that. But yeah, again, the, this this is a point that comes up later too, is any help with recruitment from the commission is still helpful. I mean, yeah, I, I uh, Jason, Tony, you can remind me how many spots we would potentially have left available. I want to say it's like three. One or two, but I think we're also not opposed to having some backups just in case right. some people are unable to attend. Yeah, so I don't I don't know what we can make available, but the the one I mean, Mercedes is not in there, BMW is not in there. <laughs> they each have two cars, two electric cars. Um, that's kind of like. But otherwise, I think you you have uh, you don't have Polestar either, right? Polestar is also another one that's missing. No question mark. I don't know if you can, you know, if anybody knows someone that has those cars. Right. I mean, it's a matter of finding you know, the right people, right? I know. I'm sure there are some in Los Santos. I've seen them around, like, whether they're from Los Santos or not, but. Uh, and you reached out to the ADB ambassadors, right? Uh, I'm not involved in that specific outreach. Oh. Um, Civil Framer from Greentown is helping us uh, with that. So uh, I assume she has, but uh, not involved with those conversations. Okay. All, right. All right. Next slide. Uh, you can see the booths that we have. And I've called this booth slash vendors because there's a couple uh, notable components here. You see EV Acacia on there. They're yeah. going to be with the Fiat that you saw on the previous slide. They're not going to be taking up one of these uh, booth slots. Similarly, we have uh, Volvo there as a business. It's the only uh, dealer that uh, we have present right now. And then just to say, too, in terms of not confirmed yet, it gets cut off at the bottom there. But paired power is a solar unit that goes above um, a car. And so that would we would hope to have separate from the booth section over a specific car. Uh, we haven't we don't have them confirmed yet and then we've also uh, discussed and don't have a person confirmed yet for a dedicated common building electrification expert booth potentially go with this list and then bicycle outfitter would have a uh, e-bike that would be where uh, our electric bike representation would be so like you have one dealer which is Volvo Palo Alto uh, and they have an XC40 XC40 right, right. So they bring their own car. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. That's that. Yeah. And and um I guess you reach out to other uh dealers, or is that something that came along with uh, uh in general? I know just the discussions were to in general want to focus on owners locally. Right. Um and the other component was that as far as I recall in our conversations, there weren't any dealers in Los Altos proper uh to reach out to. So right. um Given given space that would be open, Volvo is, is the one we have on here. Okay. Cool. Next. Um, so promotion. Uh, originally, Greentown was going to was looking at doing uh, quite a big chunk of this. After discussions with uh, staff, we learned that uh, because it's a city event, they need to take uh, charge in many ways on this. Uh, so we already had a somewhat extensive list of. What we thought should be done, uh, city, city staff communications wing has reviewed that and made their own modifications to that. And that this is a broad summary, and you know, it doesn't get too far into the details. But also want to host on an event right page. Uh, we've uh, talked for a long time about these two particular uh, banner spots. 
that are quite large in, uh, in Los Altos. Yard signs uh, called also called A frames or something locally. You have inter informational flyers that would hopefully go up a lot of places. Newsletters, um, can, physical newsletters, e newsletters, school newsletters. That's it's a very broad category. Uh, and there's there's talk about doing promotion on uh, with Facebook advertising and such. And then a very minor one being a, a text PSA with uh, channel 15 locally. And then you see the one call out there. Um, hoping to have designs from city staff to work with for flyers and potentially be able to manipulate for different social media uses by the end of April. Uh, just one question. Sure. Uh, are we going to have signs the day the EV fair is happening on San Antonio? Yes. I like to say EV fair ongoing, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So that's what your signs is mostly referring to, but yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Okay. Cool. The next slide is talking about us. There will be one more slide after this, but essentially, things I would love for us to discuss today are what are the materials we want at the table? How can we do the commissioner shifts? Obviously, we're missing uh, a couple of commissioners that uh, might have filled that too. So I don't know how solid that'll be, but we can always put placeholders and then. I just wanted to put the thought out there. Of, is there a particular focus that we want our booth to be? Is there a certain question that we want to be asking people? Or is there a certain expertise that we want to be leaning that people can ask us for at this specific event? Um, so that's something to chew on. Uh, so I think we'll come back to this slide, but just uh, to wrap up the presentation, go, go to the last slide, just to say in terms of next steps on this event, city's working on promotional materials, of publishing the actual event, the planning group, which is Greentown staff uh, plus me, last finalizations for booth vehicles, as well as volunteer recruitment still needs to be done. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the commission can help with EV recruitment as well. Um, but focus for now can go to the uh, booth planning for the commission. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, you want to? I guess any other broad questions on the presentation before we uh, eventually talk about the commission booth. I don't have any particular questions. Um, I think we're going to have the discussion around the booth. I think it makes sense. Um, I think this is this is exciting. I can't wait to be to be at the EV fair. Uh, that's the first for Los Santos, and if it's successful and. You know, based on what we learn, we can do another one next year and so on and improve on it as we go. Uh, so I think that's great. I think it's a lot of work too. So I thank you, Carl, staff, for doing all, putting all this together and getting us to that point. And obviously, all the other people from Great Town, yes. <laughs> Sybil Kramer, and so on. That that was really a collaborative effort. And I think I'm glad that. I, I, I'm glad to see that it's really shaping up and we're getting there. So we've been talking about it also yeah. for a while. So that's exciting. Any other questions? Any questions you guys have? So maybe I should take public comment on that if we have any public comment before we have that discussion uh, around uh, the EV booth. Uh, do we have any public comments? Not. Yes, Gary, as a public. <laughs> uh, I just I think this is going to be a great event. Uh, it, you have you've done a lot of work on it. You're going to have a lot of different vehicles there. Uh, it's going to be spectacular. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. So, um, if I may. Um, before we focus specifically on that, I, I would like just make sure that. We try to get as many vehicles as we, as we can, not types, not number of vehicles, but types of vehicles. So I don't know. I don't know. We could get some of the these gaps filled. Uh, would be nice to to do that. But if we can't, we can't. That's the way it is. Um, so what what question I I was thinking about is that in Mountain View we have a BMW dealer there. So should we reach out to them? And see if they're interested in having at least one of their cars there. Yeah. I don't know of any Mercedes dealer that's in the, the vicinity of Los Santos, but at least these guys are just around the corner. Uh, 
So anyway, so that's, it might be interesting. Um, so you want you want feedback on what if we have a specific focus that we want for the commission booth, like free giveaway stuff. Um, so uh, two thoughts. One is that you know people go around and look at the specific vehicles, but then perhaps having somebody at our booth that can speak to kind of generic things like how what kind of charger do I need and how am I going to install it you know that they might not ask this specific I know that the you know owners can also answer those questions but somebody might want to not look at a specific vehicle and have more generic questions about how do you provide the infrastructure for an EV um, that could be one potential thing to make sure that we have Somebody in addition to a commissioner <laughs> who can answer some of those those questions. Um, other than that, I mean, the thing I think we're most trying to promote and get out there is our electrification information and resources. I don't know if we want to have like a little barcode or some kind of handout saying, have you seen the website? that has information about electrification. That could be one thing just to have something to focus on and talk about. Also, I think the range of the battery capacities, you know, especially when people start thinking about switching, you know, a lot of people opt for plugging because they're worried about the range the battery, you know, the, the battery capacity. So I feel that can be a very important information in addition to the charger. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming most of the owners are going to be speaking to the specifics of their vehicle, right? So they can say, this is how much I typically get and this is how much long it takes me to charge. Um, but that, I don't I know if that yeah, uh, Like an overview, because I think each of these makes, they may some of them have a higher capacity one than others. So, you know, when people really have in mind they want to shop for EV, I think it will be very helpful for them. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we want to have a, I don't, I don't know if there's a good summary resource comparing, you know, I don't know if there's a one pager comparing some of the most popular vehicles and kind of their stats of range and cost. And, I don't know if that would be a big undertaking to, to get together, but that could be another potential piece of information we provide as a kind of overview of, you know, oh, I want to spend about this much and get this much range. What, which one should I look at? So, uh, yeah, that information is available from various uh, third parties that spend right. that right. spend their time actually testing EVs in real conditions. In specific settings, um, and there is one that comes to mind. They have tested pretty much everything that's available right now, and they have a table with ranking from one to last in terms of range and so on. So, uh, I, I, if that's something we can do at our booth, I don't know. I'd be happy to provide that information. It's not without becoming from us. It would be a third right. party, yes. and that's available. Right. Mm -hmm. We really, as a commission, we don't have any flyers or any specific information, but and I'll throw it out here. And this is my lack of knowledge about how a lot of these things work. But is it something like, you know, you get these QR codes that you can shoot with your camera? And and so, for example, if you if somebody's asking about building electrification, they can look at this and it'll take them to the web page with with our information on it. Or if they're looking about mileage, you know, they, you shoot this and it'll take it to this third party listing of the gas mileage. Is there something that we can do on that front that could be at the table so that the, because the person at the table, you know, isn't going to be knowledgeable about all these subjects, but, you know, you could have a, you know, the top four or five related to vehicles and maybe a couple other things that the environmental commission is doing. And they just shoot the, the QR code and it takes them to some reference information. 
that that'd be because we're we're not going to create flyers for the the environmental commission between now and June. At least I don't think we want to do. There's that. a lot of paper if you were to print. Uh, yeah, the electrification, uh, the energy. Oh no, 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 no. So but we yeah. just need to. I think the idea of the QR QR code would be a good one. Yeah, so if you do, maybe we have one sample, we say this this is what we have. Scan the QR code and you can. Again, that's adding more things to do on this, but you were asking for ideas related to how do we man the table, and this is a simplified idea that came to my mind. Oh, it's easier, it's easier. Oh, yeah. A couple things to for context. Um, I think going back to the vehicle range on each vehicle that's there, we'll have an information sheet that'll show the price and range and just some. So that's going to be the EPA numbers. Which is different from the real range, though. I mean, it's, that's what I'm saying. That's just, a, but I, I, so I think we can have both information. Right, in, right, yeah. Potentially, There'll be information with the QR code there too, where they can see for each vehicle. And then I think um, the Silicon Valley chapter of the Electric Vehicle Association, so Civil Civil and Jerry's group, um, they'll probably have a lot more of that kind of like detailed information about charging and some of the more technical so they will yeah they will have a booth right so we can we can send them to that booth if the people have some specific right. questions about charging and so on yeah, then the questions want to come talk to us yeah, and that the question is they, people yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they they come talk to us. we could have it then if we can refer them to the other booths for for specific information on the vehicles and so on and so forth then you know, maybe we could just have a few that refer to, you know, here's our climate action plan, you know, and they can right. go to it or, or here's our statement on building electrification. I'll make a pitch for if we do have a building electrification expert right. that we pair them at our table. <laughs> sure. and, yeah, you know, I, I think that might be kind of a nice synergy, you know, and I don't know what you, you know, building, you know, what you, what you put on the Title of the booth, but you know. You you're thinking about charging infrastructure, or you're thinking about building electrification in general. I, well, both. You know, I somebody like Tom Cabot, or I don't know who you're looking to get, or somebody from SBC, or, but um, well, you know, somebody who can, if, when somebody comes up and says, "I'm trying to replace my heat pump, and this is my situation," and I don't have enough panel and it's over here and I don't have space. Somebody who's really technical about that stuff. Um, I think that would be nice to have together at our booth. So we can be there just to, yeah. you know, yeah. support. Well, I think we can, we can tell people what we're doing and what we're working right. on, right? So I think that's, that's, I think would be useful for the, people to know uh and, and i don't know look so i think all, all the points that were made are good points in terms of i think qr code to take to the cap to take to what can i do like we have that section in the cap right and it's specifically in the on the website also we have that what can i do to this section we should have a qr code for that if people say what can i do today to minimize my uh, greenhouse gas emissions well there you go you can start with that uh, we 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 have the energy tabs also could be a QR code. But these are the three things I'm thinking about. The question is, if we have the rich codes by that time, maybe do we have something about the rich codes at the booth? And that we don't know until later. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think you're going to know that because the approval process is going to that's take true, right, yeah. right, much longer, right. Um, curious too, just in terms of like if there's an I catch visual that we can have at our booth with that focus on here are resources to help your own greenification, or is it information about what we do? Obviously, like attendance is low tonight, you know, that sort of thing. Like, how do we get people to know more about what we do? Is that is that is that, is that part of the focus? Um, is having something to get people to ask about their forestry rather than, you know, just oh, being there and, and hoping it comes up, you know. That's, that's a matter of focus. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the the objectives of the, the uh, right commission bush should be 
twofold, I think. It should be one, which is everything that has to do with electric cars, whatever we can provide, whether it's sending people to places or whatever. The second one is what we do. And even the threefold, actually, because the third one is what resources are currently available for people on that we've been working on on the web on the website on the city of Los Santos website. So again, going back to what we talked about, I think these are the three objectives of the of the booth. I think for the for us, it's advertising what we're doing, giving people some resources with regards to what they can do today, based on what we have, and and then three helping around answering questions around electric cars as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's having that real life testing of these electric cars or whether it's having something else, because we all own an electric car, I think, anyway. Um, so I think there is that too. Any, should, should, we, should we have anything else at the booth? Can we think of, in addition to these QR codes and stuff that refer people to specific? Areas. I think people are aware of SVC incentive, uh, right? SVC would also be there. So um, yeah, they'd be there. But okay. SVC so incentive good. is only one part of the incentives that people can have. But I don't. I don't think actually people are aware of any of these. I mean, people that really look into it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna have some information. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the reason why we compile those all this information and put it on the website too, right? Mm -hmm. You can recruit <laughs> if you're interested. We don't have any open positions, but <laughs> yeah. I, the other question, I think, just is logistically, if we say, okay, yes, we need to print these QR codes. How do we figure that out? If you know, we're going to have one more meeting before the actual EV fair to pick that. I mean, it's just that's right. That, we, that, we, the, the logistic because we don't have a subcommittee for this is just. Uh, well, I think we should plan in, I mean, in May, you should have something pretty much finalized, right? In terms of what our booth would be? Yeah. I can certainly put something together and then, yeah, we can react, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think we can, we can have, um, so in terms of what we can have at the booth, I think, you know, I think we have provided some direction. Yeah. There. Um, and what what we're supposed to do at the booth, I think we provided some direction. Um, I think the other aspect you were asking is also uh, attendance at the booth. Do we have a do we have a list that's filled up now? It's early. like from ten to two. Who's going to be at the booth from the? Uh, from that, the that's what we need to okay. be great to figure out today. I guess it could be done next month, but um, no, no, we should we should we should really move yeah. on that today uh, as much as we can. So you're doing two hours uh, or one hour shifts or how do you do that? I was picturing one hour, but I, it really comes down to people's comfort level. Uh, four hours total. I'll be there from 10 to two. So yeah. you can count me as you wish. I could be uh, from 10 to two or from 10 to 12 or 12 to two. I'm happy to, uh, to be there. I'll be around the whole time. This is June. And third, available as well. I had to check my calendar, but I think I was, I think I have it on there. I know we're going someplace in June, but I think it's after that. Okay. Uh, and I think I would suggest that you have two, two people. It's it, the tag team is good. One person can talk while the other's thinking <laughs> on how to respond. So it's I think it's always good to be good to have two people, you know, be they two shifts ten to noon and noon to two, you know. So that's you're looking at four people or and I I think that you uh may be drawn since you have knowledge of other things, you probably shouldn't count yourself there. Um, At least for the beginning of the end, I was thinking, yeah, I probably would be stepping in, but 11 to 1 potentially. Mm -hmm. Nadia, yeah, you wanted to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, don't forget that you will be their car. Right? Yeah, my car would be there, but 
it's it's not my car it's my wife's car so yeah, she'd, she'd, she'd be the, be the one uh, she'd be the one with the car oh okay yeah <laughs> i mean she's driving it 80 percent of the time so. <laughs> so she's there she'd be there yeah i i, I just enrolled she has no choice now <laughs> Um, so I'll probably, I, I have a conflict, but I can probably be there 12 to 1. Okay. So I can do an hour shift. Cool. I can be there 10 to, 10 to, 10 to 11 or 10 to 12, whatever. I know both of you will be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. I think we need, we need, roughly we need four to five. Because he pays a lot of people asking. Yeah. one slot. Yeah. Uh, and you you out so it's a uh, uh, six remaining commissioners we need to find six uh, we need to find five out of the six to take slots uh, okay. and hence also my suggestion to split the booth with an electrification expert because that will help with the having two people at once kind of thing. Yeah. can i um ask you because we can't can't do it Obviously, because of the Brown Act, but uh, can you, uh, Casey or Tanya, send an email to all the commissioners with requesting attendance for the two shift from 10 to 12 and 12 to 2? And have the people assigned to the specific shift, and maybe there is a fifth member that is a backup or something. One hour, one hour shifts are preferred. I think you should do two hour shifts. I think, but I don't know. You, if you want one hour shifts, you're gonna need you're gonna have four shifts. That's eight people. So some people will have to take two shifts anyway. So you can do one hour if you want. It's just, I think you know maybe like um, Laura can only take one hour, so maybe we do one hour shifts and she take that one from twelve to one. One hour shift is fine too. So it's it's up to you to decide how you want to do. Two hours is a bit long, but one hour is good. Yeah, sure. If you can find the if you can find that people for the one hour shift, yeah. Yeah, Any other materials we want at the table? I mean, could be third party material, right? Or does it have to be specific to the CD and the commission? Yeah, well, let's, let's assume it's going to have commission to have to do with the commission or, yeah. the, or the cars. So, and you have, a, you have a electric bikes too, right? You haven't mentioned anything about that. My well, outfitter is going to be our electric bike representation there. Okay. So that's, yeah. So they're going to bring their bikes and stuff. Okay. Very good. Any other? Comments, questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, before we go into CD staff updates, um, I just wanted to remind you that, that tomorrow's meeting, in addition to the rich codes and some other things, there will be also discussion around the Tabata Carpet program and our door dining program. Uh, there was an item that was removed, um, but it doesn't mean we can't make a public comment about that particular item on the city council agenda. Um, I will make a public comment. I will send an email, most likely, rather than making a public comment about the public program. Um, so anyway, so just put aside for, I don't know who's going to be at the meeting tomorrow, but you'll be at the meeting. Uh, um, is it, were you assigned to the meeting already? Or say someone else is also attending the meeting? We're gonna have to look at that anyway. But I don't know that I was. Assigned. Okay. Thanks. I don't believe so. All right. This, but I could be wrong. It's also a little later in the agenda, so some of us may not be present in the room, but maybe online. Right. But because uh, the parklets are going to be dis discussed first. By right. city council, so this could be later on in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, city staff updates. Do you have any additional updates? Before we do that, I think let's go back to the port plan. Um, well, okay. Yeah. So that I think it would be best to finalize it tonight if we can. Okay. So let's. Uh, do you want to put it up? To put it back up, what you have based on the discussion we got today. Emma, we we'll bring out the work plan as we discuss. <laughs> right, let's take a look at it before we we do that. Just make sure that it's in line with what we discussed. Okay, urban forest management plan. Yeah, it should be one, and then the other one should be. That's one that this is really. Yeah, you can remove the other one. Understanding that's kind of sequential, right? You can do one, two if you want, other within that one. Okay, two, three. Uh, yep. Four single use plastics, green operations, that's five. Yeah, keep going down the list. But so we are saying single use plus ordinance to be adopted this before next April. Okay, we're we're going to achieve that, right? Uh, for the ordinance, yes, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. The other ones don't have an ordinance goal, right? But it's just a. Um, so emergency management resilience should be six, right? I think we were holding those. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, and transportation. The placeholders right now. Okay. All right. Are we comfortable with that or as a white plan? I think that uh, for transportation that there's the uh, the cap. Yeah, that's right. Keep going down then. Yeah. So that's a that's a roadmap approximation to be discussed with the council. To be discussed with staff and council as to what the priorities are and what the resources are. And then the ongoing efforts is that, well, other than the EV fair, it's really that ongoing work like the outreach it needed and then the environmental commission web page updates as needed as we get, we get more information. All right. Any other changes, comments, edits on what we have there? Okay, who wants to make a motion? I, you were making I, it already. I was. You thought I was joking. I was not. <laughs> we'll approve all of the work plan as discussed. Draft work plan. Call it draft work plan. Sure, friendly, but all sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, all commissioners. Uh, uh, so <laughs> that support the motion to uh, approve the draft work plan as amended. Um, please raise your hand. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you, Casey. All right, now we uh, staff updates, city staff updates. Do we do you have any additional updates for us? Uh, yes. So uh, Santa Clara's Santa Clara County's household hazardous waste program is holding a disposal event in Los Altos on Saturday, April 15th. So this coming Saturday. Um, and appointments can be made online uh, or by calling their phone number. The event has been advertised in the town prior, the city manager weekly update, the MTWS newsletter, and through flyers at the library. Um, so we've been trying to get the word out about that and get residents to make appointments. So where is where is it going to be? Um, the location is not advertised publicly, so folks need to call and make an appointment for that. 
when you call and make an appointment, which I have, then they give you the the address. Oh, okay. It's being complicated. <laughs> they just don't want they just don't want people drivers. showing. Up. They don't want drivers. Yeah, they they want to space people out. Okay. And there is a website or just a phone number to make the appointment. There's also a website hhw.org. H H H H W dot org. I did it through just the the link that's on the city manager's website. Just clicked it. It okay. takes you right there. All right. Put in your information and we'll sign you up. I think I'll bring my stuff over to your house. <laughs> HHW.org. The last update I received on Friday was that we had over 200 completed. So, oh, that's good. Second update is that the city of Los Altos will be holding a compost giveaway event on Friday, April 21st, from 8 30 a.m. to 3 30 p.m. Um, the event is self serve and by appointment only, and all the appointments have been filled at this time. Um, this is the first event that we're using this model for, so we'll um, you know, see how that goes and evaluate and adjust for future compost events. So the compost is provided by who? Maintenance. MTWS. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, mission track, right? Yeah, but yeah. I think it's our compost yeah. coming back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that was always coming back to us, right? Well, it was nice last year. I, uh, it was at the maintenance yard here in Mackenzie Park. But this year is going to be different. So it's all taken. All the slots are taken, you say, right? Wow. Well, uh, yeah. uh, just as a an idea or a suggestion that you used to be able to do it down at the smart station because they had an arrangement with the smart station and now you do it and they want to check your driver's license so you can't do it anymore because I used to do that in a lot of the smart stations. Um, and it may be something to put on a, a future item list, but you know, is there some way that the, the city can make arrangements with somebody else to share a resource? Because I know you're limited on space to do it but you know a couple ideas that i have is either go back to some sort of arrangement with the smart station or maybe make an arrangement with lost off the hills because they have an area where people can go and just pick up the compost well is that close to the park too close to the highway there is it's, that that space it's, um, well it's it's right near the dog park yeah uh, right. just down from carissima park and a down from the courtyard, but they they have a stack there. And my suggestion is is can we do some cooperative effort and then it then you don't have to be in the business of bagging things or making appointments, but you might be able to work some sort of arrangement between between the cities or between the city and the smart station. Yeah, that's that's something we can look into. Yeah, because I think it's making the process easier for people would be, oh, yeah. it's like, if, well, if, I'd, I'd hate to see, you know, probably if Los Altos Hills was aggressive, they could probably identify a lot of Los Altos people that are going there sure. and shoveling their compounds. Yeah. But they have more space than we have to, to, to do that. Okay. The last update I had um, was that one of the items on the city council agenda for tomorrow includes updates to the commission handbook regarding teleconference options. Um, yeah. So I'm just flagging that it is the last item after reach codes, but uh, so just keep an eye out for additional updates uh, after this meeting and moving forward. Right. So we would get updates through emails, um, obviously. Yeah, I think from the city. Um, city clerk. City, city clerk or the risk manager. And then and then we coordinate uh, what that would look like. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you.
commissioners reports and comments we had uh, the march 20 the march 14 meeting was cancelled but we had the march 28 council meeting which i attended to okay. make our public comment but uh, did you also attend yeah yeah go ahead so i mean i can give a summary um, of the this pertinent discussion which was the study session um about commissions um after the, the follow-up of having met with all the commission chairs um and there was recommendations for some commissions to not have changes and some that were recommending changes that were um around reducing number of commissioners seven to five commissioners combining some commissions um reducing the number of meetings um, that some commissions are having from you know like we do year you know monthly basically to suggesting some go bi-monthly um and then scoping you know what the, the what uh what appropriate areas for commissions to work on for the environmental commission which was one of the commissions that staff was recommending needs changes um there was um no you know the council was um, wasn't suggesting from what i heard there was not a lot of feedback around reducing our number of meetings um wasn't clear whether they provided feedback to reduce the number of commissioners um nobody suggested that we combine with another commission but the main um, area of feedback was that we're um, beyond you know working beyond what our scope of work should be and that our scope of work should be clearly laid out about and defined about what is commission work versus what is staff work um so no surprise to anyone I think our commission is is already changing um what is is um what we're considered we're supposed to be working on um and it's very going to be very different I think and even more so into the future about what is considered to be appropriate for the commission to work on versus um, what is um, um wholly owned by staff and so I think we're going to be getting a lot of direction about um where we should be working and not um so big change for those of us who've been on the commission for a while and um, have been doing a lot of things that I guess now are considered um inappropriate for us to do in terms of the division of labor between staff and commissions council did thanks for that work previously when there was a staff gap okay. yes <laughs> let me see that there um one of the other topics related to commissions that I'll bring up is just the, the remote aspect and uh, what they want to do with that. And general consensus was, you know, everyone should just let be in, in person, uh, but that uh, commission should be treated the same as council in terms of uh, uh, a lot of times not being present. Uh, there was a large discussion, small discussion about video versus audio only. General consensus was that uh, losses you should have video on if you're going to come in, but uh, but general in general, they're worried about Brown Act violations, worried about uh, safety concerns regarding needing to post your address if you were to try to join uh, remotely. So, uh, but in general, they weren't they didn't make any recommendations for the moment. They're going to see how things go in the next six months since we're still fairly fresh with this transition uh, to really reassess that. Um, yeah, there's plenty of other uh, things that happened. I've already touched on the two hybrids that were approved. Uh, police basically said, you know, yeah, the infrastructure isn't there. There's we only have a few 60 days, I think it was, um, to possibly procure these. And uh, Councilmember Flagger mentioned that Menlo Park was able to show that a Tesla was. Uh, they were able to demonstrate that that would cost less in the long run. Uh, than one of these Fords, despite needing renovations to the vehicle, despite it being a commercial vehicle. Uh, so there is, uh, there probably is a case for more work that can be done to make it possible for that, make sure that the next time this happens that uh, we're able to switch to 100% electric vehicle. Um, 
but yeah, ultimately those are approved. Another thing that was discussed was the uh, uh, armament for the police, several uh, military grade uh, items um, they wanted. And uh, in general, there was a, a de-escalation in some respects, but it also this is largely related to what would go into the, the SWAT team's armory and they share it with Mountain View. Um, so none of this stuff uh, saw use in the last year, just mostly training and there's only a few people that have access to it. So. Uh, but that's uh, without going into the specific things that they wanted, that's the general uh, takeaway, I would say. Um, housing element, I'm gonna I would mess this up. I'll mess this up uh, in some in some way just because uh, they're they've got taken off the consent calendar, and so there wasn't actually a formal presentation. Um, but there was an or an update ordinance that was adopted and <laughs> basically changes that some projects that require council design review. Don't anymore, and staff just reviews that. <laughs> if you have any modifications to that part, feel free to chime in. Um, the last thing they had to do was support for um, to they're, they're, they were labeled as mental health related things, SB forty three and SB three sixty three. Uh, from what I found, SB forty three is just uh, changing the definition of gravely disabled to include people that are uh, mentally are viewed as possibly dangerous to somebody uh, else. Um, and then SB 363 is all about just making sure that there is a database for the beds that are available and the different uses, use cases of those beds for different mental health and, and hospital um, uses. So those were approved. Was AB 1276 on the ordinance? In yes. <laughs> so, that was uh, that was a, that's uh, I think it's the public hearing tomorrow that, that officially gets adopted. Um, yeah. Our comment was shared with them. Yeah, so you may have already commented. Yes, that. yes, I made that public comment. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Those are the big things. There was a comment about trees that were moved because of the storms um, being in worse condition than, than they expected. But there were more hollow that. So. Yeah. That's that's one one point of the in the tree preservation the ordinance that is being put together. Will you take into consideration what happened during the storms to adjust uh, that list of trees and prioritize the trees and the size of the trees and I think so far we just see the list. Um, you know, probably there are more work coming on the other list, right? Because I think there are some types of trees that came down that are more at risk than others. And I just don't know. That should probably should be part of that analysis and the recommendation. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll have to check with other state staff on that. Yeah. You, know, you can just, yes. Right. I went on my gosh. So we, we can <laughs> verify that. And in terms of future agenda items, they, they did want to learn more about the power outage. Um, and that they're waiting for their, they just landed on the idea that they'll get a report first before they do a study session. Thank you. Any other comments um, or reports from this? So I just wanted to uh, add to the discussions around the commissions because I, that's that's an ongoing process. I think it, it may take some time. I don't know exactly what the end result will be. Um, I have mentioned, uh, so I, I know because we, so I had this discussion with the city manager and the vice chair, Tom, uh, and uh, we provided uh, Casey, uh, Tanya, and Aida were also, part of the discussion and we provided feedback based on one-on-one -on -one discussion we've had. Um, I think we reinforced specific points. Um, I don't know, unfortunately I was at the meeting, I, I, was, I did not attend the meeting on the 20th, so I don't know how much what the feedback we gave was reflected back to the council. Um, but I think there is still a lot of discussion ongoing in terms of what will change and will not change. And, and uh, this was so, just a study session, so no decisions were made. Yeah, right. So 
and I've had additional one-on-one -on -one discussions also on that subject. Um, you know, to try to convey our viewpoint as a commission with regards to what we're doing, what we believe we should be doing, how we should work with staff, how many we should be, and how frequent our meetings should be. So uh, that's an ongoing process that I am having right now, talking to people, make sure that uh, there is a general understanding, a direct understanding of where we stand. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that's that's something that's happening. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how it goes. All right. Um, before we move on to the potential future agenda items, I want to make sure we have um, commissioners assigned to the next um, council meeting. So tomorrow it's going to be you for the subcommittee, the Rich Code subcommittee. And uh, it, was there someone else assigned to that uh, meeting tomorrow? I would have to look back at the notes, see if someone else was. Uh, sure, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I know we had, but because we, so um, I think we had done a list until the end of April. So good. Um, so it's it's next, it's tomorrow, and then it's two weeks from now. There is one more meeting in April. I don't know who is assigned to that last meeting of April. Yeah, it's the 11th and the 25th. Um, we can go back. Oh. Okay, so let, let's look at the main meetings. I just want to make sure we list all the main meetings and we assign where there will be two meetings in May, I believe. We need to assign commissioners to these two meetings. May 9th and May 23rd. So who's who wants to take May 9th? I can take May 9th. Okay, thank you. And the 23rd? I would rather turn myself to the June one than I'll take the 23rd and be there on the 23rd. And then I'm, I'm assuming we have someone put the last meeting this month, but I just, I don't know, we don't need, we don't need a backup. We don't need someone assigned to it, right? Wasn't in the minutes. We probably should put that in the minutes. We should have a way of uh, of looking at it. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let's let's put that in the minutes. Make sure we have at least we can refer to it. Okay. All right. Good. Um, potential future agenda items. So we have already a radio list. Um, so we won't have to revisit the work plan next month now that we've voted on it. Any, any additional, you know, we have, a, we have a list also of agenda items, um, which is actually the, the minutes. Oh, it's, yeah. Do you do we want to add anything to that list for the time being? I'm still in touch. I'm still trying to get SBC to get it back to me about the tariff on bill program, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm, my understanding is that they don't have the funding right now to do it. Uh, so that's why probably they are they're not getting back to me because I was asking them to come and present the program to us. Uh, that's quite unfortunate, but it seems to be the case. Um, I don't know. Um, Anything else we want to add from, from the list we have already? Okay. Good. Finalization of Commissioner Booth. Yeah, the, the that's already on the list. Yeah, that's already okay. on the on the list. So yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Very good. So thank you very much. Uh, I can adjourn the, the meeting okay. at uh, 946.